<laughs> Take your Bibles and let's go. I might just start and preach all through it. Uh, let's look first at Joshua. Joshua. I love the book of Joshua. And, uh, you know, God used Joshua in a mighty, mighty way. And if we look at chapter 1 of the book of Joshua, I'd like to start in verse 3. And I want to bring out the promises of God that he made to Joshua. You know, if you're a child of God, you've got promises. The greatest promise, if you're a child of God, you've got a home in heaven. Now, what could be any better than that? Wow. I'll be so glad when I get there. I saw some of y'all where you were coming in. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll put that in my wheel for you. But uh, we won't need any, any walking canes. We won't need any doctors. No. Perfect health. And everything that your heart could desire, he'll give it to you. I hadn't planned on preaching this morning. But I, I prayed a prayer. I said, God, whatever you want, I'm, I belong to you. I'm not my own. That's right. I belong to him. Amen. And I say to him every morning, you've already got a plan. Just put me right in your plan, doing your will. And what a... You know, how many of you here? I said, preacher, I know i got a home in heaven. And I'm looking forward to that. Lift your hand up. Oh, all right. Some of you are not sure. I'm glad because you can be sure if you've just learned to trust Him and to love Him. Stay in this Word. This book will change you. Joshua chapter 1. How many of y'all have found that? Verse 3, would you stand with me, please? <clears throat> I want to bring a short message this morning on promises that God made. Do you know, Titus 1 2 says, God cannot lie. Aren't you glad for that, preacher? I am. I ask God. Question. Uh, many years ago, I was preaching a revival at Rose Union Baptist Church. Now, that was down there close to Rose Mills. Anybody know where Rose Mills is? Nelson County? My grandmother lived. She had a, she had a big house, and uh, the stagecoach used to go right by her house. And back when the old Model T <laughs> Fords were popular, how many remember those days? I do. Y'all didn't think I was that old, but I do. <laughs> but uh, I remember those days. We'd get in that old Model T, and we would... It was a lot of good quartet singing back in that day. I love good singing. And boy, I'll tell you, I can remember, man, y'all used to fill this choir. And just testimony time. And, uh, but you still got the Spirit of God here. It blesses my heart to see this many people here this morning. Now let's think about the promises 
that God has given Joshua. And we're going to see we have those same promises. He is still on the throne. He is still working. He's still saving souls. Amen. Father, thank you for the opportunity of being able to stand here in this pulpit. I thank the gracious pastor. God, I love him and I thank you for him. And Lord, to be able to stand here. And Lord, I pray that every heart is going to be open to your word this morning. Many of these same promises that you made to Joshua, you're making to us. And Lord, if there be one here today that does not know they have a home in heaven, God, touch that heart today. That's the reason we preach. That's the reason churches are here. And that's the reason many of you have come this morning. So, Lord, speak to our hearts this morning. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Look at the promise that Joshua has made, they've made to him. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. You've had a lot of different evangelists here. You've had a lot of pastors. I think you got the best. I mean that. I'm not saying that. But I think you got the best. He's a blessing. Amen. But look at that promises. For the wilderness, oh wait a minute, verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. And you know, I can remember many, many times having revivals here, preaching revivals here. I thought I could preach in Russia the same way I did here. But you know, they respond to anytime if I was preaching in Russia, or Romania, Hungary, Lithuania, wherever, there would always be somebody that would come to Christ. Amen. And you know, I can Almost go back to years back, Pastor. Well, don't want to kick my pan or a can away. But, uh, but you know, when you stop and think, promises that God has made to you, how many you're standing? How many here? You say, Brother Earl, one promise that I know for sure. I can remember the day. Maybe a young teenager, maybe I'm married now, whatever. Maybe you got white hair like I have, but and some of you have no hair, but anyway, <laughs> do you remember the place and the time that you invited Christ to come into your life? Amen. Woo, some of you, amen, and yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You'll never forget that time. You might not always remember the day, but watch this. But if you are born again, you can remember when it happened. Amen. Boy, you walked over to here on cloud nine. Yeah, sure. And that's what Christ does for us. He gives us assurance. Like what he said in verse 3 there. There's a promise. Whatever your foot tread, I'm going to bless. I, I'm a big believer 
and soul winning. Yes, sir. I'm a big believer. I believe that every Christian should lead at least one person to Christ. My daughter's back there. I think she's perfect, but my wife doesn't. <laughs> no, she loves my wife, and my wife loves her. We do. My wife's been playing the organ for a good day, Jan. How many years? Yeah, you can sit down. <laughs> Some of you begin to wobble a little bit, so but let you sit down. <laughs> but we have a little saying. I'm going to get back in a word in just a minute. But <laughs> we have a little saying. My wife has been an organist at church for a good day for years. And she still plays it organ at Clifford Baptist Church. But we have a, we laugh about it. She played at a Temple Baptist Church, the organ for years, and they, they had a balcony at that time, and my wife would be playing an organ and Jan and a brother probably misbehaving like some teenagers do. She could play and send a message to them at the same time. It was a short message. If you don't stop talking and behave yourself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with you when we get home. That's the reason my daughter is so short. <laughs> but let's look at the promises that God made to Joshua. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, I see a lot of people here. You've been in this church for a long time. You've been playing. 50 for years and uh, next, no, next September will be 50 years. Woo, bless our heart. Every bit of that's recorded in heaven. Yeah. You know that? Amen. Every bit. Amen. And I look and I see some of you all. I knew you when you had hair. <laughs> but you've been faithful. And this is what we're seeing here. Joshua had a promise. He, of course, he had a promise of heaven. But he says, every place that your foot treads upon. I forgot y'all started service early. And I was doing a little preaching out there in the car. And uh, I can remember sitting right over here. What was the pastor's name? Wayne Green. Wayne Green. Wayne Green. Not only have I lost weight, but I've lost a lot of memory. But, <laughs> but I can remember Brother Green and I sitting right over there. And I believe you was sister pastor. You still doing some preaching, and you had the school on top of that. Yeah. Terry Cook too. Terry. Terry Cook. Terry, remember Terry? Yeah. yeah. But you know, I believe that we all need a job. We all need to be faithful, serving God. Start a Sunday school class. Start a prayer meeting. Amen. Do something for His Amen. glory. Amen. What a Savior. I've, ever since I got saved, I've never got over it. 
I mean, I was, whoo, people couldn't believe that I got saved. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it right there. I can see a lot of teenagers back there saying, "What'd you do?" No, no. But, uh, but you know, God been so good to me. We have two children. They are in church. They serve in the Lord. We had one. Grandchild that came by the house yesterday. He had a birthday. I think he said it was five. <laughs> Thank God they didn't stay too long. I was glad to see them. But if they had stayed very long, I'm not sure our walls in our house would be standing. But you know, it's no accident. It's no accident that you are here this morning. God has a plan. Now, what are you doing for Christ? You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 11 30, he that winneth souls is what? Is wise. That's right. Think about it. Think about the joy that floods your heart when, when you got saved or when you see others getting saved. Yeah. Boy, remember some services that people were lined up through here. Trust in Christ. You see, people were not caught up in the world like many are today. What did the Bible say? Love not the world or the things that are in the world. We are the love one. Love Christ. Christ. It's coming down here. I won't name the place, but I used to go dancing now. I was lost as I could be. Parties. And you know, Doug Oldham used to sing a song. Thank God I don't come here anymore. Amen. I don't go there anymore. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. You know, my joy is being with Christian people. Thank you for a land me, I think I said, I, just give me 10 minutes, but uh, you know, there's nothing any greater than serving the Lord. Amen. Nothing. Let me share one other verse. John 15, St. <coughs> John 15, <clears throat> now I won't and I'm going to ask that the Lord would burn in your heart what he's put in mine in John chapter 15 verse 16 it's a powerful verse of scripture if you're here this morning and you came and probably already prayed and you probably already read some scripture, but don't ever forget that. I've already told my wife, I won't put this on my tombstone. Look what it says. You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. Mm. That's the reason it's no accident that you're here this morning. Amen. You've been chosen. What in the world could be any better than to be chosen? Chosen? Who? The Holy Spirit. God chose you. You've been, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you 
that you should go and bring forth what? Fruit. That's a powerful verse of scripture. It's one of my favorite. You've not chosen me. I chose you and ordained you. That's where your power is. Put his hand on us. I'm going to have to give an account for telling a big story. I was president of my senior class in high school. Not by choice. <laughs> they voted me in. I was a good baseball player. Had a lot of friends, but I can remember I had to give a, a speech at the junior and senior uh, class reunion. I never talked before a group. My knees, actually, you could hear them knocking. But I said, Lord. <laughs> If you'll just get me through this time here, Lord, I will never get and make any talks or any speeches. I think I made heaven laugh. Next thing I knew, a few years after that, I was on a plane flying to Lithuania, uh, parts of Russia, and just getting experience, but I said, Lord, I'll never, never tell them I'll do this again. But you know, they quickly changed because people came, started getting saved. Yeah. I've never had that joy. Amen. And God had blessed His Word. I could even tell you what I preach. But if we'll just get His Word out, He'll bless it and use it. <laughs> right after that, I'm going to share another verse. Isaiah 41 10. I was sharing that with my daughter. Come in here. Look what does it say? Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will hold thee. And yea, I will help thee. The Bible says, I'll hold in, I'm in the right hand of my righteousness. Don't ever forget that. Isn't that a wonderful promise from God? Amen. That's right. He holds and he's teaching us. He's teaching us. I knew that I had, had to share a couple verses. I, I called the pastor yesterday. We never were able to make contact. But I, I wasn't going to call asking him to preach. I was just calling to let him know my daughter and I will be visiting the church. What does he do? He comes back in and he says, come on. Oh, share the word. Just share the word. I hadn't planned on it. But look what God does. What does he say? You didn't choose me, but I chose you and ordained you, watch it, and sent you forth to bear fruit. And watch it. And your fruit shall remain. That'll make a Presbyterian shout. Amen? Amen. That follows us to heaven. That's right. That's going to be a great reward. 
given out in heaven. Yes, when he comes. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Don't ever forget that. Sometimes it's the things that you had planned what God has. And he's using you. Jack over there playing and singing. But a blessing. Amen. And you know, that's what we need. That's the thing that I appreciate so much about your pastor. If you're willing to let God use you in this church, He'll put you right up here. Amen. And I appreciate that. I love to hear you preach, brother. Right, amen. Joshua 1. Verse 3. Have faith. Verse 6. Be strong. And have courage. And let no man stand in your way. Did you get that? Joshua. He knew that that would be time. God knew that'd be times that that his faith would be tested. And you know, I guarantee you, many of you here this this day, you've been tested this week. You've been tested. Now I sure I have. <laughs> You're going to be tested. But you know what these tests, these trials do? To make us stronger. Amen. To make us trust Christ. That's right. Amen. To be faithful. I realize this morning, I'm in one of the best churches in this whole area. I had three churches that they've given me an invitation. Come. Come anytime. Come. But God made it on our heart to come here. Amen. It is always a blessing. A blessing me. You know, I'm closing with that. If you stood before Jesus Christ, the great judge, today, what would you offer him? Have you read your Bible ever? Every day this week and prayed and called on the Lord. How many, and I'm not going to ask you to share it, but how many would say this morning, Preacher, the devil had done everything trying to keep me down this week. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah. But you know what? You only went inside. Keep doing. Be faithful. Yes. Stay in this old book. Yes. Every Friday night for many, many years, before I was even called uh, to pass, look at all 37 people came and we prayed every Friday night. Don't let anything keep you away from the Word of God. Amen. Don't ever let it. It's no different when you're reading that and standing there. It's like Jesus spoon-feeding us. Give us that understanding.
Father, I'm just so happy about you this morning. Nothing really is worth talking about if you are not included. So Lord, I thank you. Forgive me for chasing some rabbits this morning. But God, Joshua, Joshua had some promises, and God, we've got promises. So I ask now, if there be someone here this morning that would say, Preacher, I'm glad I came. But preacher, I'm not 100% sure if a rapture occurred right before the last amen <coughs> that I'd go to heaven. Preacher, I don't read my Bible. I don't pray. I don't study. I'm not faithful like I should be. You've been so gracious and kind to me. And I realize this morning, I'm seated in your house here. And Lord, I thank you for the pastor. Thank you for the congregation. Now, Lord, I ask please that you keep your hand on the pastor and his family, that you keep your hand on this church. Lord, we always know when we come here, we're going to hear the Word of God. Keep your hand on it. Stir us all up. Fire us up that you will receive glory and praise and honor. And all God's people said, Amen.